Tyler Lawrence here with World of MMA, and on the show today we got Joey Gambino, who's making his UFC debut uh, this weekend against Steven Seiler at UFC on FX4. Joey, welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, first off, Raging Warrior, how, how, did, how did you get that nickname? <laughs> Everybody asks that. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely unique, one of a kind. Uh, growing up in high school, um, you know, sophomore year, uh, football coach started calling me a warrior. Um, no, no, no. That was the wrestling coach. Football coach started asking me, you know, me for being the size that I am, believe it or not, I played a little bit of outside linebacker and uh, some cornerback, but I play outside linebacker because I was quick and I hit hard. So, you know, eventually coach would just say, like, I hit, you know, unlike other guys on the team. And when I went on the field, I was just always angry. Like, I had this inner rage. And uh, they used to tell all the other guys, you got to find that inner rage like Gambino and go out and, and hit somebody, hurt somebody. So that's where the rage came from. I ended up getting it tattooed on my bicep. Um, and then the following season, during wrestling season, I sliced my eye underneath my right eye, got seven stitches in the first match of a, of a tournament. And I won the match. And then the next three matches, I went on to wrestle with a face mask. And I could only see out of one eye. And uh, I won all three of my matches winning the tournament. So from there, everyone called me a warrior. So throughout high school, you know, coaches and buddies of mine ended up putting them together, creating, you know, calling me the Raging Warrior. And I liked it. I stuck with it. Um, so it was always like a nickname. So, you know, coming into MMA, you need a nickname. And I already had one. So it worked out perfect. That, that, sounds, that sounds like it works out perfect for you. Um, speaking of high school, you said that you wrestled and you played uh, in football. Is there any other uh, martial arts that you experienced while growing up? No, just growing up, it was always some, you know, backyard boxing with friends and brothers, and, and that was about it. So hands were always, you know, decent. And then, of course, you know, my base is wrestling. Um, you know, I wrestled all throughout high school, had over 111 career wins, and I went on to the uh, 2008 um, Section 9 Division I New York State champ. So, you know, that obviously plays a big role in my MMA career. But I'd never really saw a DJJ or Muay Thai or anything like that, you know, through uh, any true boxing training either until I started three years ago. And when you did make your start three years ago, um, what was it like uh, being a New York resident knowing that uh, mixed martial arts wasn't even legal? Well, you know, that, that of course sucks. And, you know, of course, every fighter's dream, I'm sure, is to fight in, you know, not only their hometown, but at least, you know, in their home state as well. Um, but I mean, that didn't really play too much of a factor in my mind, you know, it's just, I had to go elsewhere, obviously for fights, you know, my amateur career, I fought uh, all my fights in Virginia, um, you know, cause out there you're allowed to ground and pound and it was almost, you know, the same as professional ruling. So I fought all my amateur fights out there. And then once I decided to go pro, I knew I had to, you know, move elsewhere to get the better training, the better partners in order to improve myself and take my, my skills to the next level. And that's when... I headed up north to uh, train with Faraz Zahabi and all the guys that tried our gym, Johnson Chambers, so on. So that, that worked out great, perfect timing. We want to talk to you about um, uh, working out over there at TriStar, but um, we also wanted to inquire, what was your record as an amateur? Amateur record was 4-0. and And I had an amateur title. I won the uh, amateur title on my third fight, and then I defended it in my fourth fight. And then... Uh, went pro from there. So you were an amateur champion, and then you became the Cage Fury fighting champion, defended both those titles successfully, and you also trained with uh, one of the greatest champions in the world with the GSP. I'm not Correct. sure if you trained with him, but you train at the same gym as him at TriStar. Um, can you tell us what it was like uh, walking into that gym for the first time? Yeah, well, you know, I do train with him, and... Uh, it was it was just amazing, you know, walking into the gym alone, if, if you've ever been there, it's nothing like I had ever been in, and especially coming from, you know, the little hometown wrestling room that I had, which wasn't really anything that I would call an MMA gym, you know, this was twice the size, no, three times the size, has motivating pictures all around, you see George, and you see other great fighters, and then you see, you know, Rocky posters, Muhammad Ali, Tyson, all these posters surrounding the gym, all these heavy bags, free weights, rings, octagon, it's awesome. Like, that alone was huge. And then when you actually, you know, I met George, Saras, all the guys I work with now, like John McDessie, Yves Jaboyne, 
Ivan Menjivar, Rory McDonald, David Loazzo, you know, just a huge group of guys that, um, you know, in a short period of time welcomed me with open arms. You know, everyone seemed to like me. I got along with everybody. And, uh, you know, they pushed me and motivated me to get me to where I am now. So, you know, which for us has helped. Uh, you know, my Muay Thai trainer Buddha's help, Jonathan Chambers helped for strength conditioning, and with all the teammates there, you know, including George, because he's, you know, teaches class here and there every once in a while, so he does some one-on-one drills with me, and, uh, you know, it's awesome. It's, it's really awesome, because I know that I'm surrounded by some of the best, and, you know, steel sharpens steel, so you got to be with the best in order to become one of the best. There's no doubt that training with uh, superior uh, partners, even them all being pr- pretty much heavier than you, is definitely going to increase your skills uh, tenfold. Um, yeah. But can you tell us what fighter inside the gym at TriStar really inspires you the most? Which fighter inside of TriStar? Yeah, is there any fighter inside there? Or maybe is there any fighter that inspired you to get into MMA that's maybe not someone that you train with? Um, well, what really inspired me uh, MMA-wise to get into MMA was when I noticed all these wrestlers being very successful, you know, for example, Matt Hughes, uh, you know, he definitely inspired me because I've seen him coming from the wrestling background being as dominant as he was. And then, you know, I don't say this just because I train with George now, but also when, when they fought, and even though Matt Hughes won the first fight, but just seeing how George evolved, and not only does he have, you know, not a wrestling background that he comes from, but he is now such a great wrestler in his division, you know, he brought in my mind to not only be a wrestler, but, you know, you have to evolve your striking as well, you know, your jiu-jitsu, your boxing skills, and not just be a Matt Hughes who takes guys down and, and ground and pounds them, which is, you know, one of the things I like to do most. But with George, he inspired me to keep an open mind. And when I got the opportunity to go up to Montreal, I mean, that was just, that was just you know, a dream come true. So I get to train with, you know, one of my idols who I would always cheer for when, you know, I was in high school. And he'd have fights, you know, we'd have fight nights and stuff like that. He'd always be the guy I'd choose. Two more questions. Uh, how well do you think you match up against uh, Steven Seiler? Uh, I think we match up very well, believe it or not. You know, it's a it's short notice. You know, four weeks uh, out, I got the call. Um, so really, I only had about three weeks to train. I'm always in shape, so, you know, shape's never been a, been a factor. So, you know, this training camp with short time, I just push my cardio hard. And, uh, you know, came up with a game plan, to, you know, prepared myself mentally. And as far as Siler, you know, I definitely think he's a top opponent. I don't take anything from him. I've seen him on the Ultimate Fighter and i watched, uh, you know, his last couple fights in UFC. Um, but I think we match up We match up well. He, You know, he likes to stand. I know that. I love to stand, but I also love to go to the ground. Like I said, I have to keep an open mind. So, you know, if we're going to stand and bang, then that's what we're going to do. If I see an opening for a shot and, and I can put him on his back, and maybe cause some damage from there, then, then I'll do that as well. You know, my mentality has always been, you know, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And, you know, in the cage, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win, whether it be standing or going to the ground. And last question. It's probably the toughest question of them all. But uh, And we saw your recent tweet regarding the uh, UFC photographers, but what's the story behind the, the chain link tattoo? <laughs> That's actually an awesome story, and I think you might be the first to actually ask about the story behind it. And um, once I won my my amateur title, uh, you know, that was just very inspirational to me, even though it was only my third fight. But, you know, I got a title and organization that let me know that I belong here, and this is actually really what I want to do. And that's when I really devoted myself 100% to the sport. So I wanted to get a tattoo that set me out apart from any other fighter, apart from any other individual, but at the same time have it be very unique and unlike any other. And all the tattoos I have on my body, you know, like the Italian flag I have and, and the stars on my arm, the three stars for TriStar, like they all have a meaning. So I wanted this to be very meaningful in what I do with my career. So I thought about the chain link fence on my rib cage. So put a cage on my rib cage, who has that, you know? And when I first went into my, you know, hometown artist, I went into my guy, and I said, listen, this is what I want. He's done all my tattoos, Marky Mark. And he's like, hold on, wait a minute. He's like, you want to put a chain link fence, like, outside that fences in dogs? You want to put that on your ribs? I was like, yeah. 
He was like, no, 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 you you should go home and think about that. I was like, no, listen, just draw me up a chain link fence, you know, put it on two big papers. Like I wanted to go from the middle of my abdomen to my spine all the way up to the bottom of my armpit. And uh, I said, draw me it up, shade it, and I said, I want to put a saying in it. So he's like, what do you want to write? So I said, on the ribs, I want to put step into my world. Because from the front, you see the cage. And then if you circle around me on the ribs, you'll see where it says step into my world, which is the cage. And then once you step into my world, the only options which are on my back say tap, tap, or nap. You know, those are the only options that any two fighters have going into the cage. You know what I mean? So I thought it was very cool. I talked him into it. And then once he did it, you know, eight hours later after it was finished, you know, it came back a few days later when it was done. He said, that's definitely the coolest tattoo I've ever done. And I'm so happy that you talked me into doing it for you. He's like, it's definitely the best tattoo I've done. We so, we are super excited to see it because we know that uh, it's not only going to make a statement when people see it, but also when you uh, when you get in the cage and the cage door closes, you can also show that the the just not the writing on the wall, but the actions speak louder than words. So definitely, we definitely th- uh, thank you for your time, Joey, and we look forward to your uh, to your fight this weekend. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.